Hello, I'm Jim Jenkins from Applied Technology Institute. I'm the founder and president of the company. Wanted to introduce you to some video samples from our courses. These video samples are the instructors who actually teach the course, giving you a brief description of what the course is intended to cover, what's unique about the course, and then you actually get to see them present five or six slides as part of the course to get a feel for the level. We're going to talk about passive narrowband um, sonar processing. And in, it's a general, just a general statement, it's a frequency analyzer. That is, it breaks the signal into small pieces uh, of separate frequency and then analyzes those in those small bands. Um, the width of each one of those bands is the analysis bandwidth and we can get considerable signal to noise ratio improvement by looking at small pieces of the spectrum at a time by reducing the noise that's around um, a signal. And uh, so by, just, by uh, separating into these discrete bands, the frequency makeup of a, a source can be analyzed in more detail. Um, that analysis bandwidth or the width of those bands that we use have to be picked pretty carefully because uh, if we're too large, we include too much unwanted noise. If we're too small, we exclude part of the signal. So we'd like to maximize SNR as much as possible by those being the same size. So that's a parameter that we're very interested in um, setting correctly. Um, in general, FFT-based narrowband processing is done in most sonar systems. And that's uh, FFT followed by a detector, some non-coherent integration, a normalizer and uh, some kind of thresholding which may be an operator or might be an automatic system. If you remember from before, we had a quadrature, the quadrature receiver that's optimum in, a, um, in some sense. And if you think about that optimum receiver, this an FFT um, implements that quadrature receiver at all frequencies at the same time. So again, uh, we want an FFT at the proper time and um, bandwidth. Uh, square law, and maybe we want to do a linear um, detector, do some non-coherent averaging to reduce the variance of the noise, uh, normalize the data, which puts it on a, on a set scale, re-quantize it for display, maybe uh, squish the, the top end and enhance the bottom end a little bit so we can see uh, very uh, small SNR things, and then put it on a display usually with a three or four bit um, scale of either green or gray and sometimes colorized. Um, when we use FFT for uh, narrow band processing, there's a fundamental rule that T equals 1 over F, where F is the frequency resolution. So if we want a frequency resolution of a quarter hertz, we have to do a four second FFT. Um, so the, this is the T is the natural scan rate of the process, whatever size uh, bends, analysis bins you want to use. Uh, overlapping the data using some old data and some new data can be used to increase that scan rate if you want to put things out at a, at a higher scan rate and that kind of does an interpolation. The downside of that is of course increased computational load and maybe smearing of noise if you do too much of that. Uh, typically we do do at least a 50% overlap as shown in this picture uh, because we will window the data that is drive the, the data through multiplication of a of a window down to zero so we remove edge effects. So we usually do a 50% overlap at least, and sometimes more. And uh, we should always window when doing narrow band processing because if there's edge effects, we can get that uh, energy splattered across the spectrum and it's not real. In general, Hamming, a Hamming window is a good general window to use. Uh, there's a Blackman window that has much lower side lobes with narrower main beam that uh, may be good when the noise has wide dynamic range. Uh, Fred Harris did a the seminal paper on this has um, lots of different windows and uh, is a good reference if you want to explore more on windows. Um, the size of the FFT and the overlap can have a big impact on how it looks, say, on a display. For example, here I have four signals, um, five signals, excuse me, 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300 at different levels. Some of them are very low and some are very high. And you can see that this is all the same data, but it has been FFT'd in a different way. That is, these are two hertz bins over here with half second scan lines, one hertz bin with one second scan lines, half hertz with two seconds, and quarter hertz with four seconds, all using the T equals one over F. 
And you can see that the picture changes relatively dramatically in terms of the size and shape. And also, in case of where you're doing much more uh, integration, coherent integration on these narrow band sources, you can see some of the sources much better than when you're doing less uh, uh, wider analysis bands. We're bringing a lot more noise into the bin up here and less here. So the typical display size is about 1024 by 800 or 1024 by 1024. So that can be a consideration if you want to start doing very large FFTs. You have to consider how you're going to get that on a, on a display. Um, this is some MATLAB code generated from some MATLAB code that's on the, the disk that's provided that shows uh, for some signals that are moving in, in uh, frequency over time. So the, uh, the bandwidth of each one of these is very small, but the variation over time is pretty big. And if you do, don't do any overlap, you kind of wash those signals out. You can't really see them. And by doing overlaps of 50% or 75%, you can bring those signals back out. You basically do an interpolation and uh, that overlap is probably really required in anything that has a lot of uh, frequency movement over time. Uh, so as just as a summary, increasing the FFT size increases the uh, integration time, decreases the scan rate, increases the resolution. If the signal is very narrow band, it can increase its uh, gain when you see it on the screen. And so we can bring narrow band signals out of noise where, uh, if they don't vary in frequency a lot. Uh, we can increase the overlap to increase the scan rate and it interpolates time varying signals, helps in some cases, but again, increases the processing uh, load. And uh, you know, increasing an FFT size can make it too big for a display, which requires boring or some kind of way to put the data down to a size that you're more um, that fits on the display. And uh, increasing the overlap also reduces the amount of time history that you're able to show on the display, so you may spread that out and not get as much time history on. And of course, doubling the FFT size and doing overlap often uh, will double the computational load, which may be problematic if you do not have the, the power available to do that.